Hello and a very warm welcome to this tutorial series about the Hive Synthesizer 2 from UE. And uh, in this seventh episode, I talk about keys and tuning. What that is and how you can use it, I'll tell you right now after the break. So this was another really nice uh, preset from the Hive 2 synthesizer, the AZ Nightfall 2. So and now I prepared a scale, in German it's tone lighter. <laughs> and this is just a normal um, chromatic scale, that means white and black keys and sounds like that. And it's repeating. So, and uh, in this episode, I talk about uh, this area. That's why I did why, why I resized the hive so really big because we we only have to look on that area. I need the play button from the transport field. So these keys, you remember, you can switch on here with these keys, and. Um, Let's start with the glide option. And the glide option has uh, two options, the rate and the time. And uh, you know gliding from, from a guitar where you glide from one note to the other, up or down. And this sounds really nice in some context. And this, uh, this option is the same. So if I use, if I um, play normally uh, from a, a lower C to a higher C, it sounds like that. If I turn up the amount, it sounds like that. And if I switch from time to rate, it sounds a little bit similar, but it isn't because the rate is just the rate uses just the amount time from half step to half step, and the time is the um, that uses the amount from one note to from the, the source note to the target note. <clears throat> so if I press C2 uh, and C3, it uses them in time, it uses the amount from going from C2 to C3. If I use if I uh, press C1, so from uh, C4 uh, from C2 to C4 with the time and with the rate so now you hear it takes a little bit longer because this amount is from half step to half step to half step to half step and this is from one note to the end note, from start note to the end note. And if you play shorter notes from C to E, or with time, So you have a different um, playing experience while using rate or time. So if, you, uh, if you're playing long distance or short distance of notes, this could make a big difference when you use time or rate. Okay, then we come to the microtuning and you may know microtuning when you're using Bitwig um, because there's the micro pitches and the micro tunings and the uh, piano roll and I think some other DAWs uh, uh, do have this as well I mean uh, in the meantime so um, with microtuning you can retune your your notes like uh, you have the the normalization on the A this is 400, 440 Hertz 
And there are some different tunings around the world, or around some music genres, or, or only around some tracks, where you just can, let's say, mistune. <laughs> it's not mistuning; it's just tunings, um, tuning different, where you can tune um, your notes different. Like the C is on the, or the A is normal, normally on the 440 hertz, and the C is normally above that. But you just tune it a lot more up. Um, we just can um, hear that with acti activating this knob and then I can click with the left click or the right click. With the right click I get this pop-up menu where I can use the lock to lock it while changing the presets or the left mouse so I get a browser here. And the default scale is that what you, um, what you all know. <clears throat> and I will play now the the scale in loop and just change here some load here some different tune files while with clicking on it. And just listen. So these are different tune files. Sorry for the crackles. This is a problem with my computer's BIOS. Um, I'm working on that. So um, now you understand these different tunes. Um, are Maybe if you want to um, play music or compose a track with the different tu uh, tuning, you just can define such tune files or use such tu tune files that, that are already defined and uh, put that in your synthesizer and a lot of synthesizers are supporting such things. For these tune files, um, there are these uh, um, per default uh, with, um, high, with the Hive 2 synthesizer, but um, um, UE has an um, online microtuning table generator on their website. I will put all those information I talk about in the video description down below. And um, maybe let's use the default here again. Otherwise, it could sound a little bit weird then. And um, there, are, um, there, are, uh, there are still some other things as well, like um, a program, not the developing language, a scalar, not the developing language. There's an open source program called Scala or Scalar. Scalar, S-C-A-L-A. Um, this is an open source program, program that you get for free for Linux, Windows and Mac OS. And uh, there you can download as well um, scales, over, over 4000 scales in, in the Scalar file format. This is SCL. And um, with Scalar you can convert that from SCL to Tune. That's the Tune file format. Or back to SCL if you just want to uh, work in in Scala. The Tune file format itself was developed by Mark Henning for his Anamark uh, VSTI VST synthesizer in 2003. Okay, that's everything about microtuning. And uh, now we get to the vibrato and the vibrato is just something where um, the pitch is vibrating, is modulating. So you can use this crosshair to put it somewhere. Normally you would put it on the pitch um, of an oscillator so and modulate it here like um, it's doing some uh, um, modulation wiggling around the, the frequency and this delay is um, that it starts slowly with the modulation and it gets more and more modulated and normally um, uh, preset producers are uh, 
connecting the vibrator to the mod wheel so you can um, while you play you can uh, manually uh, dial in some modulation for example if you play or hold a, a long note or long notes you just can uh, uh, dial in very gently a little bit modulation or very very hard <laughs> i don't know what's your playing style is so then there's the pitch band and with the pitch band you can change this with a mouse wheel or just click on it uh, left or right and select a different um, a different value and with this value you can change the pitch so and on those values you um, you dial in somewhere there's always like a lock and this lock symbol prevents when you change the preset that this value gets um, changed as well for example Here's the lock as well. You can lock the whole life <laughs> if you like to. So, and last but not least, there's something I want to ask you um, just a little bit because a lot of people forget that maybe. And it would be very nice if you do this for me. And it's about that. It would be very nice if you like, subscribe my channel and uh, I like most if you comment on my videos, just say hello, <laughs> or, um, put some questions in there or maybe some tips and tricks um, that maybe others could be interested in. So show up <laughs> and uh, yeah, just leave me a comment. That would be really nice. So the last thing in here is you see those circles on the keys. And uh, on those circle, you can you can click on those circle and just select which keys are available while you're playing on your keyboard. So if I now start playing, this doesn't change. This doesn't change either. And now you get the change. example this could be very nice just to um, define the keys you want to play with so with a right click on such a uh, circle you get a menu so you can clear everything here so it's cleared or you can um, lock it as well or you could uh, use um, some of those options like the chromatic this means all keys black and white or the minor scale so you get the minor scale and the very important thing about selecting some of those uh, scales is if you want to um, see what is for example the E minor scale you have to go here on the E click on that and select minor scale and now you have the E minor scale or you want to have the I don't know um let's say uh g g major pentatonic so this is the g major pentatonic for example this is really cool because you have a nice visual feedback which keys are that uh, scale you're using g blues scale or well, let's use d for example diminished or um, G flat um, Bridgian dominant, for example. And this is really nice just to see which keys are that. If you if you are learning all that stuff, you just have a visual feedback from that. And if you play that, you can play every key, but only those are changing. one and the last feature is if you if you know if you um, doing some sound design with the hive synthesizer and you um, 
uh, changing parameters and everything normally you should hear what you're doing so you press a key on your keyboard or on your controller somewhere and you hold that key and now you're changing things on your on your synthesizer and um, yeah you always have to hold uh, those key in Bitwig you can use the latch device that holds the one or every key for you if you like to in other DAWs there's uh, I, I think so something similar but with a hive you just can double click a key and Hive holds it for you. I need to learn double clicking. So now you can just do everything you want over here. I don't know. For example, and um, Hive is playing this key and just click on it again and it releases the key. So that's everything about, I wanted to tell you about the Hive synthesizer, about the keys and tunings. There are still some tutorials coming um, for Hive 2. And yeah, I hope you liked it. And as I said, um, I would be very happy if you leave a comment and or, or you leave a comment for tips and tricks or you uh, leave a question for me or for the community. And I hope you stay healthy and I hope I see you soon again. See you. Ciao, ciao.